Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, San Diego. Yo. Let me let me thank all of you for thank you for coming out tonight. And let me let me thank Rosario Dawson for that extraordinary introduction. It's a little bit hard to follow Rosaria because she said everything I was going to say. The only thing she didn't say, I think, is not only that we have 9,000 people in this room, we got many thousands more in the overflow room. When we began, when we began this campaign about 10 months ago, we were 3% in the polls, about 70 points behind Secretary Clinton. As of today, last poll that I saw, we are five points behind and we're gaining. When we began this campaign against the most powerful political organization in the country, we had no money and no volunteers. Now we have hundreds of thousands of volunteers all over this country. When we began this campaign, we were considered a fringe candidacy. Now, who who in America, the media said, could believe in a political revolution? Well, 10 months later, we have now won 10 primaries and caucuses. And unless I'm very mistaken, we're going to win a couple of more tonight. When we began this campaign, we talked about the need for millions of people to become involved in the political process tonight in Utah tonight in Idaho and tonight in Arizona, there are record-breaking turnouts in terms of voting. Now, this campaign, this campaign is doing as well as it is generating the kind of energy and excitement we're seeing here in San Diego and all over this country. Because we are doing something very unusual in modern American politics, we are telling the truth. Now, the truth is not always pleasant, not in our personal lives, not in our political lives, but we cannot go forward as a nation unless we are prepared to confront the real issues facing our country. And let me tell you briefly what some of those issues are. Number one, number one, in America today, we are living under a corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining American democracy. 
Democracy is not a complicated process. It really isn't. It means that you have one vote, you have one vote, you have one vote. You want to vote for me? You want to vote against me? That's fine. But what democracy, what democracy does not mean is that billionaires can spend unlimited sums of money to elect candidates who represent the wealthy and the powerful. That is not democracy. <laughs> democracy is not about cowardly Republican governors trying to suppress the vote. And all over this country, what we are seeing is Republican governors making it harder for poor people, for people of color, for young people, for old people to vote. And I say, I say to those cowardly governors, if you are not prepared to engage in a free and democratic election, get another job, get out of politics. Today, today, the United States has, sadly, one of the lowest voter turnouts of any major country on Earth. Our job is to ingre increase voter turnout, not lower voter turnout, to make it easier for people to participate, not harder. But as Rosario mentioned, this campaign is not just about a corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining democracy. It is about a rigged economy. It is about an economy in which the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. It is about an economy where the 20 wealthiest people own more wealth than the bottom 150 million people. It is about an economy in which one family, the Walton family owning Walmart, This one family owns more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. And what a rigged economy is about is the wealthiest family in this country paying their employees wages that are so low that many of those workers have to go on Medicaid and food stamps. And it is the middle class that pays more in taxes to pay for that Medicaid and food stamps. So I say to the Walton family, get off of welfare, pay your workers a living wage. That is, that is just one example of many of a rigged economy, working people paying more in taxes to subsidize the wealthiest family in this country. That is crazy. Together, we're going to end that. This campaign is about ending a situation in which millions of our people are working longer hours for lower wages. 
It's about ending a situation where people in America need to work two or three jobs just to bring in enough income and health care to take care of their families. It's about an economy where mom is working, dad is working, kids are working, marriages are stressed out, kids do not get the attention they need. This campaign is about creating an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. But it is not just a corrupt campaign finance system that we are going to change. It is not just a rigged economy that we are going to reform. It is also a broken criminal justice system. It is not acceptable to me that we have more people in jail than any other country on Earth. Not acceptable that we are spending $80 billion a year, $80 billion, to lock up 2.2 million Americans, disproportionately African American, Latino, Native American. This campaign is about real criminal justice reform, real police department reform. This campaign is about saying we are tired of seeing unarmed people, often minorities, shot by police. Now, I have been a mayor, and I have worked with police departments all over my state and police departments all over the country. And the truth is, vast majority of police officers are honest and hardworking. But, but when a police officer, like any other public official, breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. This campaign is about ending the militarization of local police departments. It is about making police departments reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. It is about rethinking the war on drugs. Today, marijuana is a Schedule I drug under the federal... A Schedule I drug under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, right alongside of heroin. In my view, that is nuts, and that's why we have introduced legislation to take marijuana out of the Federal Controlled Substance Act. In my state of Vermont, in my In my state of Vermont, neighboring New Hampshire and states all over this country, we are seeing now an epidemic of heroin use and opiate abuse. 
in my view, and we are seeing people dying every day from heroin overdose. In my view, when we deal with drug abuse, we have got to deal with it as a health issue, not a criminal issue. Let me just take this opportunity to say what I know is on everybody's mind. We're all aware of the terrible attacks that have taken place in Brussels. Dozens of people are dead, and hundreds of people have been wounded. And I think I speak for everyone in expressing our condolences to the people of Brussels. That's right, that's right. And let me simply say this. We will stand as a nation with our allies and our friends and people all over this world. We will stand with them and we will together crush and destroy ISIS. We will destroy ISIS through a coalition in the Middle East led by the Muslim nations themselves. With our support and the support of other powerful nations. But as King Abdullah of Jordan said a few months ago, what is going on there is a fight for the soul of Islam and the Muslim nations have got to take on ISIS and win that war. And we can win that war and destroy ISIS without getting the brave men and women in the U.S. armed forces into a perpetual war in the Middle East. The war, the war in Iraq was one of the worst foreign policy mistakes in the modern history of this country. I voted against that war. And I will do everything that I can to make certain that the United States does not get involved in a similar type war in the future. This campaign is doing as well as it is because we are listening to the people, not wealthy campaign contributors. And one of the major differences between Secretary Clinton and myself is how, is how we raise the funds we need to run a campaign. When we began this campaign, we asked ourselves, should we have a super PAC like everybody else? And we agreed with you. And the way what we did, unlike all other campaigns, is to simply reach out to the American people at BernieSanders.com and say, if you want to support a candidate who is prepared to take on the billionaire class, to take on Wall Street and corporate America, 
This is your campaign. Join us. And what happened over the last 10 months is something that I, in a million years, would not have believed. And that is, we received well over 5 million individual campaign contributions. And does anybody know the average, average contribution? And that is revolutionary. Because what we showed is that you can run a winning national campaign without begging billionaires for their money. Now, Secretary Clinton, Secretary Clinton has chosen has chosen to go a different route. What she has done is established a number of super PACs. Her largest one recently reported raising $25 million from, from special interest organizations, including $15 million from Wall Street. Now, she has also, as many of you may know, given speeches on Wall Street for $225,000 a speech. Now, what I have said, what I've said is that if you're going to get paid $225,000 a speech, it must be an extraordinarily brilliant speech. It must be a speech that could transform our world. It must be a speech written in Shakespearean prose. So I think, given what a great speech it must have been, let's release, let's release that speech to the American people. This campaign is listening to working people throughout this country. And what they are telling me is they can't make it on eight or nine or 10 bucks an hour. And that we have got to raise the minimum wage in this country to 15 bucks an hour. This campaign is listening to disabled veterans and to senior citizens. And what disabled vets and seniors are telling me, they cannot make it on 11 or $12,000 a year Social Security. And you know what? Nobody can make it on $12,000 a year Social Security. Now, despite that, we've got Republicans in Congress wanting to cut Social Security benefits. Well, I've got bad news for them. We're not going to cut benefits. We're going to increase Social Security benefits. This campaign is listening to women. And what women all over this country are saying is they are sick and tired 
of working for 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. And I know that every man in this huge room will stand, huge room, will stand with the women in the fight for pay equity. And by the way, by the way, when we talk about women's rights, I want everybody here to know that all over this country, you got Republicans running around talking about family values. And let us be very clear what these Republicans mean. What they mean is that no woman here tonight or in this state or in this country should have the right to control her own body, I disagree. What they also mean is that our gay brothers and sisters should not have the right to be married. I disagree. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the Latino community. There are, there are today, there are today some 11 million undocumented people in this country, and many of them are living in the shadows, living in fear, and they are being exploited every day because they have no legal rights. Now, I am the proud son of an immigrant, and I know something about immigrant life. And what I know is that we will stand with our Latino brothers and sisters. We will. We will fight for comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. We, our immigration policy is what all immigration policy should be. We unite families, not divide families. And we will stop the deportations currently taking place. And if the Congress does not do its job, I will use the executive powers of the presidency to do all that I can. Now, in a democracy, there are people who have different points of view on immigration reform and everything else, but what is not acceptable is for the Donald Trumps and others to insult our Mexican and Latino brothers and sisters. In the year, in the year 2016, candidates for president should not be resorting 
to hatred and bigotry. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the African-American community. And they are asking, how does it happen if this country could spend trillions of dollars fighting a war in Iraq we never should have gotten into? How does it happen that we do not have the funds to rebuild crumbling communities like Flint, Michigan? How does it happen that there are minority communities all over this country where unemployment is sky high, where the education system is failing the kids, where health care is not acceptable, and where too many of our young men and women, instead of getting great jobs, are ending up in jail? Together, we are going to change the national priorities of this country. Together, we are going to invest in our communities. Together, we are going to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure and create millions of jobs. Flint, Michigan is not the only city in America with serious water problems. All over this country, cities and towns have water problems all over this country. Roads and bridges are failing. Our rail system way behind other countries. Our airports, our levees and dams need to be repaired. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the Native American community. Everybody here knows that the way this country, going back even before we were a country, the way that the Native American people have been treated from day one is a national disgrace. Native Americans have been lied to, they have been cheated, treaties negotiated have been broken, and today all over this country we're finding many Native American communities in deep economic despair. If elected president, we will begin treating our Native American people with the respect that they do. This campaign is listening to young people. And what young people are saying is, how does it happen when everybody told us we needed to get an education, when they told us that we needed the best educated workforce in the world? Why are we leaving school twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in debt? In my view, in the year 2016, when we talk about public education, it is not good enough just to talk about the first grade through the 12th grade. 
The world has changed. The economy has changed. Our public school systems have to change, and that means making public colleges and universities tuition free. I want, and this is not a radical idea, I want every kid in this country who studies hard, does well in school, to be able to go to college regardless of his or her income. I am a member of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Environment. And I have talked to scientists all over the world. The debate is over. Climate change is real. It is caused by human activity. And together, we are going to break our dependence on fossil fuel and transform our energy system into sustainable energy and energy efficiency. Now, I have been criticized for saying this, so let me say it again. I believe that health care is a right for all people. I believe there is something wrong when every other major country on earth provides health care as a right and we do not. Today, the affordable, the affordable Care Act has done a lot of good, but we need to do more. Today, 29 million people have no health insurance, and even more are underinsured. Today, we are being ripped off big time by the drug companies, who are charging us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Today in America, one out of five people cannot even afford the prescriptions their doctors write. So I think we join the rest of the industrialized world. We pass a Medicare for all single payer program. Everybody here knows that change in America always takes place from the bottom on up, not from the top down. That is the history of the trade union movement where workers came together to fight for dignity. That is the history of the Civil Rights Movement, where African Americans and their allies stood together and said that racism, bigotry, and discrimination will not continue in America.
That is the history of the women's movement. Let us not forget, a hundred years ago, women did not have the right to vote, the right to get an education. They did not have the right to do the jobs they wanted to do. But what happened is women stood up with their male allies. By the millions, and they said together that in this country, women will not be second-class citizens. And that is the history of the gay movement in this country. Where against incredible hatred and opposition, the gay community and their straight allies said that in this country, people will have the right to love whomever they want, regardless of gender. That is how change takes place. Change takes place in a very profound moment when people look around them and they say, the status quo is not working, not good enough. And today, all over this country, people are looking around and they're saying, grotesque levels of income and wealth inequality is unacceptable. They are saying that we should not be the only major country on earth that does not guarantee paid family and medical leave. They are saying that we should not have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. They are saying that millions of our people should not have to be buried in student debt for decades. They are saying that we should not have more people in jail than any other country. They are saying that we should not get involved in wars that are killing our young people. This is a pivotal moment in American history. Either we continue down the path in which the politics and economics of this country is controlled by a handful of billionaires, or, or whether we make a political revolution. And what, and what that revolution is about is people standing up from coast to coast saying enough is enough. That our government belongs to all of us, not just a handful of campaign contributors. In early June, California, the largest state in our nation, will have, will have a major role to play in taking this country forward. If there is a large voter turnout, we will win here in California.
on primary day here in California. Please come out to vote. Bring your friends and your relatives. Let's do it. Thank you all very much.